Hey everyone, Rick here from Rick's Automotive. We have a 2011 Honda Pilot. Has a battery light on and a loud whining sound coming from the engine when you give it gas. I'm not sure if you can hear that. I'll do an audio clip in just a moment. If you look down here at the scan tool data, the battery is only charging at 11.5 volts. The alternator is operating at 100% duty cycle just to keep up with the demand. And the signal is low. So this vehicle has a failed alternator. In this video, we're going to cover how to replace that alternator. But first, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and click the little bell up top so you don't miss a thing. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the negative battery terminal. You can see through right here. Now, you don't have to take this plastic piece off. It's in the way, but I'm going to just to make my life a little easier. You can do that one of two ways. You can use the proper tool, or you can just use a flathead screwdriver. Uh, just These clips just pop right up. And this just comes right out. Before we make our way over to the alternator side of the car, we're going to take this top engine cover off, just so we can start taking things off here. We have more room. These are real easy. Just use a Flight of screwdriver, turn the tabs to where they're 12 and 6 o'clock, and just lift up and it pops right out. I went ahead and put a fender cover on the passenger side of the vehicle just to protect the customer's paint because we will be leaning over this side of the car quite a bit because the alternator is tucked down and they're pretty good. Uh, we're going to start by removing the coolant reservoir, the bracket for the coolant reservoir, the power steering fluid reservoir the bracket that houses the power steering reservoir and this hose clamp. Now I went ahead and put a shop rag underneath this hose on the power steering pump. When I pull this clamp off, this hose is full of power steering fluid, so it's going to leak down over the customer's engine. You don't want that. So what I have is, uh, you may not have this. This is just a cap uh, for, a power, for a brand new power steering pump. When these come from the factory, they have this cap on there. So. I just happen to have an extra one laying around, so I'm going to pull this hose off and put this on as quickly as possible to prevent that fluid from coming out. I'm also going to keep this um, hose that goes to the power steering reservoir up higher than the actual inlet so it doesn't uh, leak out fluid as well. So I'm trying to prevent making a large mess here. Sometimes you just can't help it get messy, but I prefer not to. If I don't have to. So you can already see there's fluid coming out of there. Yeah, see. Probably good. Four or five ounces or so came out of there, but uh, most of it got caught up in the rag. So it didn't make too big of a mess. I'll pull that in just a moment. Then I'm going to go ahead and take off the, the two reservoirs and the brackets. With this hose disconnected, I went ahead and got a bungee cord and wrapped it around the top of the power steering reservoir, which is holding the hose in place. Notice the top of the hose is higher than the, the cap to fill the fluid. That way we don't get, uh, as long as it stays upright, fluid won't pour out of this hose. So you put your hand underneath the reservoir and push up. It'll come out of the bracket pretty easily and just set this aside as far back as you possibly can. All right, next we've got the coolant reservoir. This has a hose on the bottom, on this side of it. Uh, you can just leave that hose in place. You shouldn't have to disconnect any hoses off this. Just push up, wiggle it out of the bracket. Keep it up or exit will spill out of the cap. And just set this aside. And we'll take these, uh, this, these, next, take these brackets off here next. These are just 10 millimeter bolts. So I'm using a 10 millimeter and a quarter, quarter inch ratchet. With the brackets removed, you can see much more room we have to work with in here. Uh, next, follow this wire, this guy right here. Follow him from, or her, from the engine mount over to the engine 
I've already removed it, but there's a 10 millimeter bolt that was right here. It held the harness to the top of the alternator. You want to remove that. And if you keep following this over, you'll see. Move the stick out of the way so you guys can see this. You'll see a rubber cap here. You want to pull that off. And that is the main line coming from the battery for the alternator. You want to remove that next. Just have a 12 millimeter socket with a short extension and a 3 8 ratchet. Uh, now, if you don't disconnect the battery and you put your wrench on this and touch any of this metal in here, you're going to blow your main fuse and you're going to see sparks like this 4th of July. So uh, that's why I always recommend disconnecting the battery when you replace an alternator. But went ahead and broke that free. You want to take this nut off. All right, now with the nut off, you can pull pull that out of the way. Uh, next, I've already taken this off, but there's also a rubber connection over this connector on the side of the alternator. You're going to want to pull this back. It'll expose this blue connector and just push that tab in here in the front. You have to push pretty hard sometimes. And this one's in there. Might have to get a screwdriver, but press that tab into here. Click. There we go. And that pops out. So that's all the wiring you got to take off for the alternator. You can see that kind of frees up all that space down there. Uh, next, we're going to remove the drive belt. Um, so to get the drive belt off, I'm using a special tool made by Mark. It's for um, it's made for Hondas. It's got a 19 millimeter socket welded onto a long um, metal handle. Uh, you're going to want to use this tool. If you don't have the tool, you can use a 19 millimeter socket on either a 3 8 or a half inch wrench with an extended handle because you are going to need some leverage. This thing is pretty, pretty tough. And if you don't have a lot of leverage, it's going to hurt, hurt the palm of your hand like crazy. So uh, also, too, you want to be careful. You don't put too much force at once. Like you don't want to jerk um, the tool or the socket. You want to press slowly and allow your body weight to slowly press, uh, depress the tensioner because this is aluminum. Um, the bolt we're putting this tool onto is aluminum. And if you're not careful, you'll crack that and it'll break it right off. So you're just going to put some body weight on it. You'll feel it move slowly. It takes a few seconds to fully decompress and allow enough, enough slack to get the belt off. Okay, so right there, I'm fully depressed, and which has allowed me to slide the belt off of the power steering pump. All right, here's a quick tip for you. Before you take the dry belt off, go ahead and snap a picture or draw a picture of how the belt is routed around the pulleys for when you go to put it back together. Now that the belt's off, this is a good time to take a look at the condition of the belt, check it for any wear or cracks. Uh, this belt looks pretty good. So we'll set this aside. The next item we'll take off is the drive belt tensioner. This is our drive belt tensioner. It has two pulleys. One of the pulleys has a 17 millimeter bolt that's going to have to come out. There's also a 12 millimeter bolt below this, about four or five inches it goes into the block, which I'll show you when I get it out. I can't get my camera down there. Um, this was the 19 millimeter um, bolt we were using with our, uh, with my wrench or your sock, however you use to get the drive belt off. This is the, the nut we were using, so it's right next to that. The reason why we're taking this off is because you can see the alternator uh, with this pulley full at full rest with no belt. The alternator doesn't have enough clearance to come out. This is uh, actually in the way, so this has to come out. This is our tensioner pulley. This was a 17 millimeter bolt we had to take out up top. This was the 12 on the bottom. And if it's installed, that's about the angle this sits in the car. So I do it all by feel. I don't need to see it um, just because I've done this, this job before. But uh, if you're having a problem getting this bottom one off, you can turn the right front wheel all the way to the right and remove um, the splash shield along the side here. Uh, there's just two clips up top. That drops down pretty easy. You can access the crank pulley and the um, um, see things much better, including this bolt. This is right above the crank pulley. It's actually right next to it. Um, so but this is how it looks when it's outside of the car. And to remove it, uh, once these two are loose completely, you just pull it straight up out of the uh, engine bay, you just pull it straight up and it comes right out. 
three remaining um, bolts that need to come out. Uh, this is the top bracket. You're going to have a two 12 millimeters here. One's going to go, as you see the back side of one right here. This is what goes through the actual alternator and into the bracket. And there's one in the front, which is, my finger is right on it. It's right here. So it's just straight in. This holds the bracket to the engine. And then if you go below the alternator pulley, it's right here, my finger's pointing to it. That is the bottom alternator bolt. That's a 14 millimeter. This is how the top bracket looks when the bolts are out. This one was the one that goes through the block. And the one on my right here is the one that goes through the top of the alternator. Here's the bottom bolt. Okay, the alternator is loose inside of the bracket. Now, a good idea before you take it out is to move it side to side until um, it becomes much easier to do so. And actually just keep doing it for a good minute or two because I'll show you why. There's, a, there's two pressed um, I can't show you here. Let me go ahead and take it out and I'll show you why. Got the old alternator out. You can just hear when you spin that pulley. Well, you could for a second, it's not doing it anymore. But you can hear the bearing make noise. Uh, here's a new alternator we are using, genuine Honda OEM part. Uh, anytime I replace an alternator starter, uh, AC compressor, I always try to use OEM, especially when it's on Honda. Uh, there's just nothing made as, as well as the Honda OEM parts. So. Um, this is a remanufactured part, uh, so if you do use a Honda remanufactured part, there is a core on this. You always want to make sure you keep the box in pristine condition. Don't rip the tabs open or, you know, get crazy with a box knife or a razor blade. You always want to open it properly, close it back up properly, keep the packing tape in there, um, or else they will not give you your refund or your core refund back. So we're going to go ahead and get the uh, new alternator installed. And I'll show you why we were wiggling this one back and forth uh, before we put this one in place. So where the lower bolt goes through, you have this that's pressed in. You can see the bolt goes right through there. This is the new alternator. The old alternator has the exact same thing. You can see there, bolt goes through there. So where this goes into the bracket, I'm going to show you there's also sorry for the shaking of the camera. Let me go around that hose real quick. That bracket also has let's see if I can see through there. Yeah. The bolt goes right through there. That's pressed in as well. So when you wiggle the old alternator, it it presses, or it doesn't press. My God, the camera's shaking, I'm so sorry. It pushes the um, tab out to allow for enough clearance to get the new alternator in. The new alternator went in very easily. It actually just slid right into place. So the bottom bolt is started. The top two are started. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this thing up. I'm gonna go ahead and just put it back together. Should I find any reason to stop any problems I encountered along the way, I'll go ahead and uh, be sure to pause the video and um, review that. But I'll go ahead and catch up with you guys here in just a little bit. Everything's back on. New alternator's installed. Cleaned off all the power steering fluid that spilled out. We're going to go ahead and start this and see if um, sometimes the power steering fluid, you have to bleed that. But we uh, topped it off, so we're going to start it and see how it sounds and also check the alternator voltage. We're going to start the engine. Battery light is off. 
come down to our scan tool here. Also, we lost connection. Let me try to reconnect. Okay, the ulnator is now charging at 14 and a half volts. Signal's high. It's only working half as hard. It's only working at 46 or 47 percent. So that's a good sign. We've got 14 volts back at the battery. So the alternator was definitely the cause of the customer's concern. So that pretty much wraps this up, guys. I appreciate you guys watching the video. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and click the little bell up top so you don't miss a thing. And we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.